Good afternoon, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop from Washington. I'm your host, Mark Levine, reporting live from the Center for American Progress in Washington, D.C. There's something wonderful, truly wonderful, about the exquisite mental torture that Amorosa Manigault Newman is placing her former boss, the one who fired her four times, guy by the name of Donald J. Trump. They're both reality stars, of course, and both of us, both of them are illustrating how you win in the reality mode. Now, of course, the first thing about a reality show is it's not real. We know that, right? Reality show is not real. Anyone who stupidly believes a reality show is real really probably gets into wrestling as well. Also, not real. Sorry to burst your bubble. Spoiler alert. But the thing about a reality show, unreal though it is, is that it is a drama. It is a soap opera. That's what it is. It's all about uh, having these archetypal people and making them fight and in drama, drama, lots of drama. You never know what's around the corner. And Amorosa is showing that she knows how to play the game as well as, or frankly, much better than uh, the reality star himself. Did Donald Trump say the N-word on tape at The Apprentice? Did he? Didn't he? Well, she won't quite say, but we think he did, but they can't deny it because he might have, because they know he probably did, because, well, he's a racist. And while that part isn't funny, it is funny how Amorosa is sort of holding the little tapes over his head and playing him like a fiddle. And what can I say? It's nice to be amused <laughs> at a time when Donald Trump is not so much draining the swamp, but swamping the drain. Yes, the drain is swamped with swamp creatures, swamp monsters. The water will not go down. I don't know whether you want to talk about Scott Pruitt or Tom Price or Michael Cohen or Wilbur Ross. I mean, the corruption is legion. Maybe we should just talk about, oh, Paul Manafort, where the prosecution rested today in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, with a pretty strong case, so strong that Paul Manafort didn't even try to mount a defense. I guess he didn't have one. And while he's innocent until proven guilty, the proven guilty part of it is uh, coming along just fine. The real question is, why isn't Paul Manafort flipping? The answer, I suspect, is that Paul Manafort truly believes that Donald Trump will pardon him. And he may be right. Meanwhile, as the swamp, as the drain is swamped, right? As the drain, you can imagine a drain just sort of swamped with all this goo and ook and corruption and cesspool. There. There in the distance. Do you see it? It's just on the horizon. What? Well, I think it's a big blue wave. See it? It's coming closer. It's getting bigger. Can you help to bring it ashore? That big blue wave can finally flush the drain, flush out the swamp creature, flop, flush out the swamp monsters. Excuse me if I'm metaphor crazy today, but I am in a good mood. I'm getting a good mood not just because the swamp creatures are frightened and scared and gathering around the drain, but they see the blue wave coming too. Last night in primaries all across the nation, signs of the blue wave were coming. In Vermont, okay, admittedly quite a liberal state. In Vermont, we had the first transgender candidate for governor ever that's uh, a nominee of a major party. That has never happened before now. I have a colleague who sits with me in the Virginia House of Delegates. You may have heard of her. Her name is Danica Rome. Just last year, she became the first transgender state legislator in the country. That's right, in all 50 states. Prior to last year, there was never a transgender uh, candidate who was openly transgender, sat, won an election, and sat down in, uh, at a state legislator, and I'm proud that that's my friend, my colleague, and also um, my mentee, if that's a word. I'm, I'm her mentor, Danica Rome. But Danica, my friend, your old news. 
already the stakes have grown and now it's a gubernatorial candidate. So uh, we wish uh, the Vermont uh, candidate the best of luck. And it's not just in Vermont. It's, um, well, first of all, Christine Hallquist, that's her name. Uh, if you want to help her out, uh, she, she really is making history. She's, it'd probably be a tough race against uh, the Republican Phil Scott. He's a Vermont Republican, so a more moderate one, but we definitely wish her luck. It's not just that the Democrats are putting forward these great, diverse, strong candidates. In Minnesota, catch this, in Minnesota last night, a very run-of-the-mill, I guess you might say, conservative Republican, uh, someone who was kind of inoffensive. He did run for president. You may remember that. His name is Tim Pawlenty. Um, lost, lost in a Republican primary to a crazy right winger. So what we see is all across the nation, the Democrats are putting forward strong, diverse, powerful, progressive candidates, and Republicans are putting forward authoritarian Trumpists, people, not conservative Republicans, whom obviously I disagree with, but people who actively oppose America's constitution, its democratic values, people who support authoritarianism, people who oppose free speech, as the president does, people who consider the press the enemy of the people, people who want to collude with Russia so that that dictatorship can have complete control over us, really right-wing wackos. Right-wing wackos. How ironic that Donald Trump calls Omarosa wacky, despite her um, unusual behavior. She may be the most normal one of the bunch. I'm not defending Omarosa. I think Omarosa is as Trumpian as the rest of them. After all, when you have no morals at the top, it kind of drifts on down. There's a reason why the White House is full of swamp creatures, because people who aren't swamp creatures won't work for this White House. Omarosa was the villain on The Apprentice, where she was fired three times. And yet the president who calls her loser now and worse actually doesn't just call her not smart, which is um, Donald Trump's code word for African-American. He also just recently called her a dog which isn't very nice. But but Amarosa was the hated villain, right? She we, We've seen them in wrestling as well. I don't know where her real character is, but I do know that she played the villain and played it well. And now she's out trumped Trump. She understands how the reality show works. She's holding back, right? You don't, you watch a soap opera. They don't tell you everything right away, right? Do you remember soap operas? I used to watch them as a kid with my mom and every commercial break, there'd be this something and it's his twin brother. And is she really pregnant? And that, whatever. But it always built up to that. Then they went right to commercial break. You had to keep watching. Well, reality shows the same thing. Even if there's no drama, we know that uh, the reality producer, the director, Mark Burnett, in the case of uh, The Apprentice, is always trying to create drama where there is none. There may be no drama here. Amarosa may well be bluffing. There may be no tape with the president saying the N-word. But then again, there may be. And Donald Trump doesn't know. And so his aides are scrambling. They can't deny he ever said it because, well, everyone knows Donald Trump is a racist. But if they admit it, it makes him look bad. And what if it's all a bluff? And Amarosa is just the kind of person who might go all in on a bluff. Meanwhile, the blue wave is growing. The blue wave is growing. We see that uh, in the latest polls, Democrats show a 52-41% edge in the congressional races, to which I say only 52-41? Can't we do better than that? It is enough for the blue wave to crash to the shore. It is enough to take the House of Representatives. It is enough to actually have oversight of this president for the first time, well, since he's become president. But we need more. A blue wave is not enough. We need a blue tsunami. 
We need a blue tsunami because only a blue tsunami will bring not just the House of Representatives over, but the Senate too. The Senate is critical. Here comes the bad news, folks. Donald Trump and his, um, his uh, what do we call him, his collaborator, uh, Mitch McConnell, has put forward more judges and gotten through more judges faster than any president, I think, in American history. That's really scary. Because the Senate ended the filibuster, they just rammed them on through. They didn't just end that. They ended long existing Senate code things, this famous thing called a blue slip that you may have never heard of that says that a senator can stop a nominee from his or her own state if they don't want it. This had existed for decades and decades. They insisted the Democrats had to have blue slips and filibusters, and they just threw all the rules out the window. Well, Donald Trump's putting on judges very, very fast, and the judges tend to be young and inexperienced and basically right-wing theological jerks who don't give a damn about the Constitution. People who would say, ah, oh, yeah, 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 First Amendment, you know, whatever. God said this. We must do what God said. Kind of like the Taliban. Donald Trump is putting the Taliban, a Christian Taliban, an even, eh, I don't want to attack Christians, evangelical Taliban, a, a religious test, litmus test for all these judges. But if we... Democrats can finally get the Senate. We can finally get the Senate. We can stop these lifetime incompetent religious zealots from a company from being on our courts. Again, they're not just religious zealots, they're incompetent. Do you remember the I forget, 20-something year old guy, maybe he was 30-something, was asked by a conservative Republican Senator Kennedy from Louisiana. Hey, so how many cases have you tried? None. Okay, no federal cases. Are you trying state cases? No. Okay, can you talk to me about oh, basically the rules of jurisdiction? Kind of first year law student questions. Nope, nope. Uh, the abstention doctrine. No idea. Okay, motions in limine. This is a basic first year law school stuff. It's how you decide whether something's going to go into evidence or not. Really, it's classic first year evidence. You know, something's hearsay or something's a business exception. Every lawyer knows this stuff. Yeah, you got to have it to pass the bar. And this guy couldn't say what a motion limine was. But he was young and he was a right wing zealot. And if he's anything like Omarosa, he had praised the president to the hilt. Because Donald Trump made clear it doesn't matter how incompetent you are. It doesn't matter how villainous you are. It doesn't matter how wacky you are. Praise him a lot, and his very tiny, tiny shriveled ego will put you in power. The blue wave can't come soon enough. 888 mark 888 If you want to join me, we'll be right back right after this. He's a Harvard economist and a Yale lawyer. He does not keep up with the Kardashians. He's Mark Levine. Give him a call now at 888-488-MARK. That's 888-488-6275. My name is Someone's Dale Pazinski. The, I'm 19 uh, years old, feed. and this is how I live United. So I can uh, say hello to my Facebook audience. Welcome. Feel free to call in, 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. Still lots to talk about. Hey, if you're talking about swamping this drain, there's a lot of drain that's being swamped. <laughs> uh, I mean, just Paul Manafort alone or, or Michael Cohen, but I don't know. Omarosa's given me just... Um, she has to have some fun. <laughs> it's nice to see the president outplayed by someone with, I won't say as few scruples as he has, because I don't think anyone has that few, but let's just say almost, almost as few scruples as he has. Anyway, if you want to call in, join me, 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. And we'll be back in about three minutes. 
you're listening on Facebook, um, hey, go get yourself a drink. You got time. Back soon. Uh, Mark, just yeah. in the pro wrestling connection, yeah. WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump. I don't know if you knew that. You oh, probably that's did. true. That's a fiction. Fair point. He's no, in I the WWE Hall of Fame. I did not know he was in the Hall of Fame. I do remember when he plan he pretended to beat up Vince. Uh, yeah, uh, they had a spat in the early 2000s. It was part of the. He was like a character for a little while. Right, they wrote right. they wrote him into the script. Right. Well, that makes sense. I just want to know who the idiots are who actually believe his shtick. But apparently they're. A third of my countrymen. So yeah, I mean, and you're talking to a guy. I mean, I like pro wrestling, but like I know you that you can it, like it, but just know it's fake. Yeah, I know that it's scripted entertainment. Right, yeah, exactly. right. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you 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 can like um, cartoons too, but they're not real. They're not real, really. They don't exist. Sorry, SpongeBob SquarePants is not a real person. What can I say? Um, yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with fiction, but when you invite that fiction to be your president, you've you've got some issues. <laughs> You know? Yeah, 100%. You know, Iron Man is a really cool guy, but if, um, Don, you know, Downey Jr. Uh, might not be the best president. On the other right. hand, can't do worse than Trump. So. It would probably be hard to be worse than him. Yep. I mean, if he's just, you know, high on cocaine the whole time, he couldn't do as much damage. So that's a good point. I mean, Tony Stark, his character is right. a billionaire, right, right. genius, played that's by right. philanthropist. That's right. right. That's right. So Tony Stark is great. So right, vote for Robert Downey Jr. because he's right. They should not have let Donald use his real name. Maybe that would have not confused some of our um, not so bright um, countrymen. Right. You know what, progressive voices, if this president were fiction, no one would believe it. It's just not very believable. I mean, a president of the United States giving classified information to the dictator of Russia and keeping the American press out while the Russian press reports it. No one would believe that someone could be both that evil and that stupid. And we're used to like smart evil, you know, or sort of stupid, bumbling nobodies but to be that much of a loser and that evil that's kind of hard so i don't think it would sell it's just not it's not believable okay buddy we're coming back all right daily and the progressive voices network remember we stick together we win <laughs> When conservatives attack, Mark Levine is ready, Constitution in hand. And here's Let me know when you're ready, buddy. Ready. You're you're up. Up. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. We're doing a special Wednesday show today. We won't be on the air tomorrow, but save next Monday. Uh, we're going to have a terrific guest on a uh, Dan Pfeiffer, who used to work in the Obama administration, has written a book, and we're going to have him on, and he's going to be great. And I just want you to remember because we're not just talking about Donald Trump here. I want you to remember all the great scandals of the Obama administration. I mean, there was, um, there, you know, there was that, that, that big scandal that, um, yeah. Um, and then there were all those corrupt people in the Obama administration. You know, all the ones that got convicted of crimes and um, um, can't quite remember their names, but I'm, I'm, oh no, I remember there was a scandal with Obama. It was huge. Remember he wore that tan suit. That was a big deal. He shouldn't have worn that tan suit. It's not presidential. Um, yeah, Obama, clearly, Obama, Trump. Oh, and then, of course, there were all those times he cheated on his wife. No, wait, no, that wasn't Obama. Um, his wife made us eat our vegetables. How dare she? How dare she? It's actually kind of hard to remember why the Republicans hated Obama. It really is. Do you remember that they used to call Obama Hitler? I mean, here Donald Trump is actively racist, is supportive of neo-Nazis, is helping the most fascist government in existence today, the 
government of the Russian evil empire, uh, former Soviet Union, with the KGB agent. Um, Donald Trump trying to disgrace and shut down the free press, uh, trying to get everyone to hate the press, coming up with all these fake news and big lies. But they called Obama Hitler. Now, I realize they didn't like that Obama was black. I get that. I'm not quite sure how that works with the Hitler reference since Hitler didn't much like blacks either. <sighs> Trying to logically understand the Republican position is, well, largely impossible, but I'm going to have Tuesday. You're also going to want to tune in next Tuesday. So I got Monday and Tuesday show next week, as well as Thursday. Tuesday, we're going to have Senator Amanda Chase back, my Republican colleague in the Virginia House of Delegates, to go over more standard liberal conservative differences. All I could say is the blue wave is forming. What are you doing to help the blue wave? As I said, I think we have a good chance of taking back the House, but I don't want 30 seats, which would be enough to take the House. I want 50, 60, 70. I want to take it back so much that, well, we keep it for a good long while. I want to talk about the United States Senate, not just because the Senate is the body that can stop some of these horrible Bush judges. Excuse me. Ha! The Bush judges actually were pretty good compared to the Trump judges. But I want to talk about the state of the races, where they are, what you can do to help. You know, the blue wave is a common, and whether or not you participate in it, will decide whether it is a ripple or a tsunami. And I kind of want to know what you're doing. What are you doing to help the cause? 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. We'll be right back right after this. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have pre So hello, Facebook audience. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.
Okay, I see Reggie's call. I just noticed that uh, the revocation, so it's uh, I was going to go there as well. Same page. Mark, not sure if you saw, but yeah, Reggie and Georgia on line three. Yep. Okay. Send him to school with Mark Levine. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You are up, buddy. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. So much to talk about. Apparently, since this show began, Donald Trump has now revoked the security clearance of the former CIA director, John Brennan. Now, he did so because John Brennan has been criticizing Donald Trump. I want you to think about that. You've got the former director of the CIA. Think how much security clearance you have to go through to be the former director, to be a director of the CIA. Think how many times you have to be examined. Do you think Donald Trump or Jared Kushner or any Trumpist could meet that kind of scrutiny? And the reason why we keep security clearances for people who are out of government, out of the intelligence uh, community, is because you might want to get some advice. You know, if you are just out of a job, you're just in a new job, sometimes you call the person who used to have the job for some wise advice. John Brennan is a really a very um, um, neutral guy. I mean, he served first under George W. Bush, right? Uh, and then Barack Obama. He's not exactly this, you know, he's not, um, he's not, ro ro um, um, who am I thinking here? Oh, okay, her name, I can see her face right now. Uh, woman who Trump, hit. Rosie O'Donnell, that's what I'm looking for. It's not like John Brennan is Rosie O'Donnell. But Donald Trump is saying that he is going to do the biggest harm he can to anyone who doesn't agree that he should be dictator. Just last month, the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, said Trump would never revoke his security clearance. What? He did. He told reporters, I think he's trolling people. What? Maybe I can play that clip. Um, yeah, he says he's just trolling people. But indeed, that's exactly what he did. So. All I can say is the blue wave can't come soon enough. Reggie, line three in Georgia. Welcome to the Inside Scoop. Happy Wednesday to you too, Mark. Well, <clears throat> this is exactly a, this is exactly what happens when evil just stands, sits by, and when the good, well, evil tries when good sits, stands, and watches by, uh, stands idly by, watches, and does nothing. I mean, why isn't anybody standing up to him when he does this? Or go up against him when he does things like this. Well, that's that's what the, that's what we have to do, Reggie. I mean, that's what I'm talking about with the blue wave. All right. right. I mean, uh, we're the only people left. Right at the moment, we don't have Congress. Now, I think we're going to get it back, but only I if we, so. the people, work really hard. You know, Reggie, you're in Georgia. In Georgia, your government is actively trying to take away your right to vote. You know that, right? Mm, not until just now, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, your candidate for governor. Had, mm -hmm. is doing his best to remove blacks from the voting rolls. He's doing his best to keep people from voting. You better make sure that not only are you, that is your, I'd double check. I would double check your voter registration and tell all your friends because this is a guy who has a history of, he also, the other thing you got in Georgia, unfortunately, is you've got voting machines that can be easily hacked. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, Georgia has, Georgia and Pennsylvania have some of the two easiest hackable machines in the country. I'm proud to say in Virginia, we have, I'm not to dish your state too much, Reggie, but we moved to uh, paper ballots 
so that um, they can be actually counted and, and we can see um, and check to make sure the machines aren't just making up numbers. But yeah, uh, Georgia, I got to tell you, if it, you got a real important chance to elect Stacey Abrams, who would be actually the first African-American woman in the country to win a governor's race. But you're going to need a lot more votes than usual. You're going to need right. um, more than usual because the guy running against her um, is doing his best to basically keep people from voting. Mm. Uh, sorry, sorry to give you the bad news, but well, I, and I'm, I'm going to totally push it on you here, but what are you doing uh, to help in Georgia? Well, what I'm doing, well, just listening, gathering information. Let me ask you to do one, one further, Reggie. And I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but you call in a lot, so I, I don't feel too bad doing it. Uh, that race, Stacey Abrams versus Brian Kemp, okay? Right. Currently, they're neck and neck, right. right? They're neck and neck in the polls. Stacey Abrams would be an historic candidate. But meanwhile, Brian Kemp, he has a history of trying to stop people from voting. I mean, that's right. what he does. That, that's kind of the role he's played in Georgia. So, to cheat. well, that's exactly right. And the only way to cheat to stop someone like that is to get so many votes that they can't they can't get within the margin of cheating, as you might say. Uh, so we, so, so we go back to return to paper ballots. Well, that's exactly right. So one of the things I hope you'll do while you're in Georgia, Reggie, is join your local Democratic Party, uh, go door to door, canvas neighborhoods, get people who don't ordinarily vote. A lot of people don't vote in midterms. They vote in presidential races, but they don't, they don't vote in midterms. And those are the people we absolutely need to come out. Those people who've never voted before, young people who are less likely to vote, people who, I mean, we just gotta, gotta go to every door, knock on every door and get everyone voting there. Because I, this is the election of the century. It, it's, it's the question of whether the American people are going to accept this racist, incompetent, dangerous president, or whether we're going to fight him. And, uh, you know, Georgia is, is, is a state that could come back from the depths of where it is, but it's, it's going to need your help, Reggie. So I, I'm, I'm sorry to put all the pressure on you, but uh, your state really does matter in this, in this fight in November. Well, I can't do it alone, you know. Well, of course you can't. So you got, you got to join, seriously, join your local Democratic Party. Uh, they will give you, and I, when I'm telling you this, obviously, I'm, 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 it's not just about you, Reggie. I'm trying to convince others to do the same. But go there, and they will give you lists of voters, people who they think might be Democrats, so you can go out and knock on their doors, people who don't vote necessarily all the time, um, you know, irregular voters, people who – because there's a record when you vote, and it'll show, okay, this person only votes in presidential races, uh, but they, we, want, we want to get them out. Um, and um, if you don't like going door to door, you can make phone calls. Uh, that's another thing. They just give you a list of people. But if you – and everyone listening to my voice, and I know there's tens of thousands of people that listen to me on Progressive Voices Radio – I want people to know that you personally can make a difference, that this isn't just about going and voting. I think everyone listening to me is going to vote, but you can do more. If you can get five people who don't ordinarily vote, right, get five neighbors or friends or work colleagues or, you know, that uncle of yours that doesn't always get to the polls, you could drive him to the polls. You can multiply our power and your vote by five times. Just get five people who – you know, maybe only vote in presidential years. Make them promise you they're going to vote. Call them before election day. Then on election day, you're like, hey, John, did you vote? Not yet. Can I drive you? Suggest Guilt them. Constitution. Guilt them. Right. Make them vote. Because this election, I swear, if we, if we don't stop him now, then we can really descend into the depths. Well, number one, I can't drive. And two, I can't vote because I don't work. What do you mean? You can. You don't have to work to vote. Oh well, I didn't know that. Oh no, Reggie, you don't have to work to vote. No, 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 no. Are you an American citizen? Right. Okay. So, uh, do do you have a voter registration card? No. Okay. Will you get one for me? I'm gonna check no. next time you call in. Here's what you do. Where Where do you live in Georgia? What city? Decatur. Decatur. Great. All right. So call. Uh, do you, what What county is Decatur in? DeKalb. DeKalb County. All right. So all you do is Google. Uh, you get to computer, right? Yeah. Okay. So just Google a Dec Decatur voter registration. All right. Call them up. You can get a voter registration form at any post office. 
any post office. You go in, ask for a voter registration form. You fill it out, you send it in, and then like, um, I don't know, a couple weeks later, you call them up and, hey, say, hey, did you get my form? Am I registered? It's not that hard to do. Reggie, for all the times you call in and listen to Progressive Radio, we, we need you to vote, sir. I mean it. I want you to promise me you're going you're gonna to try to register to vote. Will you do that? I'll try, man, but I can't, get, I can't guarantee no promises. Well, what's so hard? We, can you get to a post office? You can go online. You can go online and get a voter registration form. Right. Okay? It's a, it's a post office. It's online. I will make sure. I'll tell you what. Um, I will. I, it's not – have you ever registered to vote, Reggie? No. Why not? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but – Yeah, I just didn't want to or feel like it, man. Okay, well, I need you to. Seriously, I know you don't like Donald Trump. You got to fight him. You got to register to vote. It's not hard. It's not hard. You let me know if you're having any trouble, and I will make sure that you get the right form. Okay? It's really easy. Just ask to go to the post. You have a local post office, right? Right. So just go to the local post office and say, can I have a voter registration form? Right. And then you take it and you mail it in, cost of a stamp. That's all it is. Right. Right. I know I'm putting you on the spot, Reggie, but I mean it. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you if you registered to vote. Don't disappoint me, friend. All right? All right. Okay. Thanks for calling. Yeah, you're welcome, man. All right. All right. Hey, I'm sorry to give Reggie such a hard time, but we all we all got to chip in. And voting is that's the minimum requirement. If you're not registered to vote, there's a number of organizations that can help you register to vote. Tell you what, next time I'm going to come back with an 800 number so that Reggie's easily, and anyone else, easily finds contacts that will help him vote because it's not hard to register you get the forms you fill them out and you're good to go you're good to go all right so what are we voting for well in the senate um it's going to be a difficult to win the senate in fact the hardest senate races just based on the map since we've had direct election of senators uh, that started back in around 1913. Used to be before then, the state legislators would choose United States senators. And it's really hard because we've got, I think, 22 candidates, Democratic candidates running, um, and I think only 12 Republicans. So it's just, it's lopsided. It's just random that it happens to be this way, but it makes it really, really hard to take back the Senate. We'll have a good chance of taking back the Senate in 2020 and 2022, but we've got to do it now because otherwise Trump puts all these terrible judges on and there's nothing we can do to stop him. They've ended the filibuster. There's nothing we can do to stop him. So right now there are only 51 Republicans in the Senate, but 50 is enough to do these bad judges because they got Mike Pence to vote the tie. We need to win two seats. And to do that, we have to maintain every single Democrat running. And there's three really tough races, arguably four. One is in um, Missouri. Claire McCaskill, one's in Indiana, Joe Donnelly. Then we've got Heidi Heitkamp in North Dakota and Bill Nelson in Florida. If you live in one of those four states, you are critical to the future of your country to protect your current center. But we also need two out of three of states that we can win. And those three states are Nevada, which voted for Hillary Clinton. We can win Nevada. Tennessee, where you've got a very moderate Democrat. Um, Phil Bredesen running against a wacko, conspiracy-minded, right-wing nutcase, uh, Marshall Blackburn. So you, you're going to want to help if you live in Tennessee. In Arizona, we have a good shot to win in Arizona, too. Now, we got to get – we got to hold every Democratic seat and win two of those three. Normally, that would be really hard to do. But the blue waves are coming, and you can help. You can really help. Let's go to line five, uh, Mark in San Francisco. How are you, Mark? Hello, Mark. Yes, you're on the air. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Medicare and Social Security. Okay. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, Ronald Reagan, he taxed Social Security and paid tax cuts with that uh, tax, and we never recovered. In fact, now it's uh, Social Security and Medicare by, uh, looked on by the Republicans as a way to pay for more tax cuts. And um, 
I, I don't think the American people really know what the Republicans are trying to do with our benefits. Uh, but it, it's disgusting, and I wish the Democrats would really try to protect it and try to get back what they stole already from Medicare and Social Security. Well, I'll tell you this. I think um, – I don't know a single Democrat running. I, I mean, and, and that includes all you know, 435 House seats and uh, 34 Senate seats. up. I, every single one of them that I know of is committed to Social Security, committed to Medicare. That's just not something the Democrats ever want to cut. Uh, so – Maybe they should talk about it more. I think you may be right about that, but I wouldn't worry that, that that's not an issue where Democrats are split. We, we, we could be split on other issues. But we're solid on that. You're right, though, that the, the tax bill um, actually raises taxes on some people, uh, but mostly cuts taxes on these multinational corporations, which means that one third of the tr two to three trillion dollars that were given out in tax money is going to foreigners. We're actually giving it to foreigners because, you know, our stocks aren't owned entirely by Americans. So, yeah, that Saudi prince is when, when you're working a little bit harder, just remember. And when that debt's growing up, going up, you're doing so to help fund some Saudi sheikh's um, great palace. And uh, if you don't want to do that, you need to vote for the Democrats. But I, I'll tell you this. Most Democrats I know would repeal that bill. Uh, and um, every Republican I know can't explain where that two and three trillion dollars is going to come from. I mean, Paul Ryan talks about taking it from Social Security and Medicare, and he's supposed to be the moderate one. So, Mark, you're absolutely right. I, I wouldn't worry about Democratic support. I would worry, though, that we're not talking about it enough, and, and that I really agree with you. That, that's my, my concern. My other concern is the fact that when Reagan uh, taxed Social Security, that opened the floodgates. We, we need to get all this money back and point out that that should have never been done and stop this idea that uh, – we can pay for all these problems with Medicare and Social Security. We made a contract uh, years ago that we would pay into these funds, and we need to return. It's not there to be used by the Republicans to pay for whatever they want to use it for, other than the benefits that we earned. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. And so I think that the Democrats do need to talk about it. One more thing. Um, one of the listeners on Facebook pointed out that Rock the Vote. Remember old Rock the Vote? Madonna used to do it. Uh, R-O-C-K-T-H-E-V-O-T-E. -E, rockthevote.org, not .com. Rockthevote.org has information that allows you to register wherever you live in the United States. So, Reggie, go to rockthevote.org. Choose Georgia. And please, please, for the sake of all that is, that is good and just in the world, Register to vote. We've got to take a break. 888-48-MARK, 888-486-275. Back after this. Schooling the GOP, one hand tied behind his back, the Constitution in the other. It's Mark Levine. Give him a... Just reading about voting in Georgia, which I'm going to share when we come back. It's kind of the point. I love, and I, I'm, I hate to pick on Reggie here. I love him. He's a frequent caller. He definitely is a good progressive, supports the cause. But you got to register to vote, man. You got to register to vote. It's kind of the basic minimum of citizenship. And if you don't like where the country's going and you don't vote, then it's kind of partly your fault. So I'm going to get a little more information about voting when we come back. Steve, I think I embarrassed Reggie, but 
I mean, it had to be said. It is what. It, yeah, you, 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 I mean, I mean, he's got to do it. He's got to do it. Yeah, he cannot just, hold his head up in a, in America if he hasn't voted. He knows 100%. the truth about Trump. He knows he calls in all the time. He's got to take action. He's got to do his part. It's like your civic duty, man. Right. Like in Australia, they have mandated voting. Yeah, they do. And you get like a fine in the mail, right? If you yep. don't vote. Yep. I learned about that in school. That's true. I guess I don't talk about it enough. I need to. And presuming everyone's registered, and I shouldn't do that. If you want that, Paul Ryan, I have the audio if you want yeah, it. Yeah, I think I will play that. Do you want me to come out with it, or you want to call for it? Sure. I'll call for it. No problem. interesting that he thought he had to work in order to nope you don't have to have a job in order to vote just got to be a citizen 18 We'll be back shortly. Well, you're right, uh, Mary McNally Weiss, that um, with registering to vote comes jury duty. But you know what? That's part of our civic responsibility too. If you were on trial for something you didn't do, would you want only people who were you know, uh, wealthy or only people of a certain, you want your community there. You want people there who have a heart. You want everyone in your community to have a chance to serve on the jury. You take yourself out of the jury, you take yourself out of and justice. And now, the voice of reason in an unreasonable world. Let me know when you're ready, buddy. Mark All right, here we go. You're up. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. Got just a few minutes left. I, you know, sometimes a caller brings me in a certain direction and I, I need to talk more about voting. You know, when I went canvassing, to become a state delegate, state representative in Virginia. I went door to door, I had my brochures, I had all the things I stood for, and I always carried with me voter registration forms. And every now and then, one in 10 voters would say, tell me, you know, I'm not registered to vote. And I'd be like, here, here's a registration form. And a lot of times, well, remember, people who haven't registered didn't want to be registered. So they're like, oh, well, you know, okay, thanks, Mark, I'll get it to you later. I'm like, you know what, I have the time. You can fill it out right now. <laughs> they're like well it's hard i'm like no it's not hard it's got your name your address are you a citizen and then you mail it in it's not that hard fill out your voter registration folks you can get it at the dmv you can get it at a post office if you don't want to go there you can call your local democratic party they will bring one to you it's really easy. You can fill out that form in 30 seconds. People were surprised. People who never registered to vote were surprised how easy it was to fill out. I'm looking here at rockthevote.org. Thank you, Mary Weiss, for bringing that to my attention. Um, you got to vote. You got to register now. You can't do it the day of voting. You got to register now. Uh, but as I'm reading through, all you have to do is live in the state. You don't have to live there for any length of time. You can live, just move there and then register to vote. It doesn't require additional documents. All they do is look at your citizenship and uh, you, give, you can give a state issued license or the last four digits of your social security number. Uh, if you've served time, that's okay. You get your voting rights restored the moment you step out of jail. So that's not an excuse. Um, there's really no excuse. If you know what this president's all about and you're not trying to stop him, well, then you're probably someone like Paul Ryan who thinks it's a joke that um, Donald Trump would never take away uh, former CIA officer security clearance, which he just did a few minutes ago. Let, let's play that Paul Ryan quote. I think he's trolling people, honestly. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, this is something that's in the purview of the executive branch. I think some of these people have already lost their clearances. Uh, some people keep their clearances. That's something that the executive branch deals with. It's not really in our purview. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think he's trolling people. Yeah, it's, it's not in our purview. Yeah, the president just kind of does it. And um, I used to run for president myself, and I was a vice presidential nominee, and people used to respect me until I sold my soul to Donald Trump. Don't be like Paul Ryan. Don't be a wimp. Fight for your country. And the legal way to fight for your country is to register to vote. That's a bare minimum. Hey, I want you to do more. I want you to join your local Democratic Party. I want you to go door to door. I want you to canvas. I want you to get your fellow citizens to vote. Because you know what? If you don't vote, you may end up losing your right to vote. Let that be a lesson to all of us. This is Mark Levine. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't miss a special show this Monday with Dan Pfeiffer. Signing off. Donald Trump bragged in 2016 that, quote, 